So how long have you been here? I've been here uh, just over two weeks now, uh, the day after the, the incident happened. So on the Thursday morning I was down here and I haven't pretty yeah. much left. Yeah. And uh, what have you seen here then? Um, overall I've seen obviously a lot of police officers here in and out um, throughout the whole day. Um, they're here to um, basically arrest Assange as soon as he steps out. Yeah. Um, obviously also I've seen a lot of people come down here to give us um, support, yeah. um, which is really great. And, and that's pretty much it really, and uh, obviously here we're here to get the, get the information out that yep. the media isn't given, yep. and also just in solidarity with the Julian Sandown mm. Wikileaks. And, and were you here the other day when he did his speech on the balcony? I was here when he did his speech, yes. And uh, what did he say then? Um, basically, he's, um, as far as the way I took it, he's still in quite like, high spirits. Um, he's trying to resolve this uh, in a legal way. Mm. And um, he basically thanked the people that came out on that Wednesday to stop the police from raiding the MC. Mm -hmm. And um, he was really happy for his people for, and thankful for the people that are staying to watch the police. Mm. So. And how, how long are you prepared to stay here for then? <laughs> <laughs> it's a good question. Um, obviously, I'll try and keep coming back and forth, but obviously um, staying here for over two weeks does have its toll yeah. on you, especially when you've got no tents. Mm and you're only sleeping in a sleeping bag on concrete floor, mm. pretty much. Um, you do need a rest at some point or you burn yourself out. So I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm willing to keep coming back and forth until a solution is um, one that Julian would be happy with mm. for him to leave. Mm. And have you met other people around yeah. here? Uh, yeah, um, I've met um, people that I knew before, obviously some people I've known before, but obviously I've met loads of new people as well uh, coming here. And I've also met new people, people that live around here mm. that um, I'm also supportive of them as well. Mm. So, uh, and what what are your views on the allegations uh, of the case in Sweden? Uh, my personal view on the allegation is that I believe it's completely made up. Mm. Um, when you re look at some of the things on it, it nothing adds up mm. to rape. In my obviously, that's my opinion. Mm. Um, but um, I personally believe he should go to Sweden and clear his and clear his name. Obviously, that's the thing. I'm obviously, um, just waiting for Sweden to give him the um, grant, the guarantees of what he's asking for and then you'll go. Um, so I, I personally on the complaint is that it's all false. Mm -hmm. And have you, is there any sign of Julian at all? Um, he's he broke come... through the windows a couple of times. Okay. Um, yeah. He's also sent, he's also sent people, uh, us out food. He's yeah. got um, people to go and get food for us. Mm. He also sent us a life jacket out when it was um, pissing down with rain. Wow. Um, we asked him to like just cut for a joke, like come out. You know, mm. we're getting wet out here, and he sent, yeah. he sent us a life jacket. So how how do you make contact with the people inside? Then? And we know people who personally know him. We've um, spoken to his uh, lawyer and his personal assistant yeah. that um, go in. So it's possible to actually go into the embassy, or it depends on on the police people at the door. Legally, they have they they, um, they can't you can, do you can ring the doorbell, but they are stopping people from doing that. Yeah. Um, we've also sent cards in and stuff like that mm. and delivered them to yeah. the embassy. So as far as the um, the embassy staff are concerned, um, they're open to visitors, presumably, or, visitors, or they're very careful. Visitors, on, on far as I'm aware, they're refusing unless you know have a real good reason to be in there yeah. because they're still wor they was worried at the time that um, once the door opens, they could easily yeah. go in that way. So yeah. they're being very cautious. On, yeah who they allow into the embassy. Mm. But you have every right to go and knock, uh, ring the doorbell on the embassy and yeah. ask. So that they, I guess the Ecuadorian embassy don't want to see it as the Assange embassy then? Absolutely, yeah, because obviously they still have <laughs> their jobs to do, unfortunately. Yeah. The embassy actually was pissed off the um, police lady. They put brand, two brand new security cameras up. Oh yeah. Oh, so these security cameras are new then? Yeah, they've been up less than a week and to watch the police. Yeah. Because they used to have meetings down there. Yeah and around, but so they put cameras up to watch them. I see. And uh, have, you, have you had any comments from uh, passers-by at all? We've had a few. Um, we've had quite a lot of good comments, but we've had a few t typical comments like, um, hang him, okay. um, why are you supporting a rapist? Mm -hmm. And um, other ones like aimed at us personally as why don't you get a job and all that kind of thing. So mm -hmm. I get used to that. Mm -hmm. And what kind of people have you met here that are supporting him? 
Um, all around the world, really, we've had people come down from Scotland who flew down for just to say thank you to us from Scotland. Mm. Um, we've had people from Germany, France, Sweden mm. have come over just to write signs. They get the signs and they've gone away. Um, so it's all different type of people, really. And even um, some people around this area, and this area is quite a wealthy area, we've also got people here who support, support them as well. And uh, have you had any contact with the press at all, like BBC or...? We have had contact with the press. Um, we don't now because there's obviously not, once again, the press don't do anything unless there's action. Yeah. Obviously, they're only in it for, their, for the money and mm. for um, their covers and newsreels. <coughs> mm. um, so we really don't have much time for the mainstream press. As well. Sure. So in, in your opinion, what would be the best way to get out of here? <laughs> <laughs> You have to ask the mayor because somehow the mayor has decided that the people here were going to plan a major distraction. Okay. That's according to the mayor. Like a decoy. Yeah. yeah, they plan on this. They thought we were going to plan a major distraction that would actually get him out of here. Obviously, yeah. I'm not sure of any plan at the moment. Yeah. But my plan was to have a massive street party. Good idea. Get two people to go into the embassy, uh -huh. stand on the balcony, they j and then hit those, all three of them then jump into the massive crowd. Yeah and then basically maybe put some kind of disguise on him, like a burka or something, get him to walk out of here, yep. and the police won't, have, police won't know where he is. No. But obviously leaving the country is another matter. That's true, yeah. He's, yeah. Because he's red flagged, which means he can't go to any airport or um, mm. dock yeah. legally. Yeah, and well, maybe he's digging his way out. Maybe he's, maybe he's <laughs> digging his way out, that'd be really good as well. But a street party is a good idea. <laughs> street party is a good idea. If it happens, I'm not responsible. <laughs> Just to make a legal thing on that one. Yeah. Wonderful sign. Yeah. Did you make it yourself? No, I didn't. <laughs> so you, you've been down here for how long? I, I came for four days the fourth week, and I've been here all of this week. Yeah. Um, and it, is, it, is it the first kind of um, uh, demonstration or something like this that you've been on? No, I when Occupy started well, but few months into it I found it and yeah. um, that's the first time I ever did anything like yeah. that really. Uh, so I've been on a few demonstrations with Occupy yeah. um, because I was waiting for it to you know, come into existence of for course. a decade yeah. at least. And how, how long do you think you're prepared to stay here for? Um, well, our plan today is to stop at the 24 hour yeah. um, camp but I would I'd imagine there will be people here from time to time all the time. All the time. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And have you seen Julian at all? Um, he came out and made his speech. Yeah. And obviously we saw him then, but apparently he comes to the window. Sometimes I see people wave, somebody waving out, so presumably it's him. Ah. Yeah. So, um, and uh, is there a particular room that you think that he's in all the time? or? Um, well, we think he's at the back of the embassy because the front of it is the actual public offices of the embassy. Yeah. So um, I think I think you can know where he is. It's one of the rooms at the side there. Yeah. Um, but I never thought. Yeah. Find yeah. <laughs> and and in in your opinion, how have the police been? Variable. I think they've used some tactics that were so cruel that it wasn't difficult to yep. to um, view what they were. I think um, once he'd made a speech and when it started to rain. The, the, thought we would all go home, so they were quite yeah. cranky that we were still here yeah. after the rain. Yeah. So mm. um, they started to demand, once they took the barriers down, they started to demand that we be awake all night. Right, so, so you can't, can't sleep here up. then? And, well, the, the truth is we decided we would leave today for the 24 hour yeah. vigil, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and we made that agreement, but this has been the tactic, it's like, you, you know, you have good cop, bad cop, yeah. well they have good shift, bad shift. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So they make arrangements and then they come and completely reverse them. Yeah. And I think the original tactic was to antagonise people into creating a public order offence so that they could right. impose a section and take people away, basically. Yeah. Um, so that didn't happen because mm. we were very used to them trying to antagonise us. Yeah. Um, so... <laughs> When that didn't happen, I think they were getting quite upset that we were still here. So they came along one day and just took the barriers down with no warning. Yeah. And then they were, for the last three, two or three days, they've been harassing us really. Yeah. Um, 
but when we said, so we decided that they were clearly building up to calling us all out anyway, so we thought we'd go instead of, of our own volition. Yeah. Um, so we, arra- we spoke to one of the inspectors about that on one shift. Next shift, the person who came along completely reversed this and started this tactic of keep us awake at night. Yeah. So we kind of gently reminded them that we we had decided to go and that we would decide to stay yeah. if they didn't decide to behave, mm. basically. So last night we were allowed to sleep quietly. Right. <laughs> so and has, has any attempt been made to actually go inside the embassy at all? I think in the early stages, people both inside and outside felt that there was a good possibility and they had a kind of psychological tactic of going in and running up and down the stairs, um, you know, an intimidation yeah. tactic, I guess. Mm because um, they said that when they came out mm. when they came out and spoke and people who came across from the embassy or from people who knew know Julian said that yeah. they'd go in at night because I guess it's empty apart from him at night and some security yeah. um, and they'd go in at the fire escape side and run up and down the stairs right. like tumble up and down the stairs basically 14 or 15 big heavy men like running up and down the stairs so right. initially I think they did feel quite fearful yeah. that they would come into the embassy yeah but now they think that it's it's now on a much more diplomatic footing so they think that threat has lowered which is part of the reason why they said they were happy for us to not be here if you yeah like. yeah whereas in the beginning they did feel like it was moral support and plus because we live stream all the time when, right. especially if there's any unusual activity because a lot of the policing is done at night and mm. um, you know there's much big, more obvious bigger presence at night and there has been which has gradually died down a bit but um, every so often it increases so if it increases we make sure that anything that is done is recorded and on the internet pretty much immediately so um, I guess the the thing now is that they would more or less do the same kind of call out that they did initially if they felt that the threat had gone up again and we could come and do what we've done before Mm. basically but for now they feel it's low and hopefully mm. that will resolve it because mm. nobody wants them to be locked in there forever. I, I'm surprised coming down here that I, I don't see any press down here, like no, no. BBC or anything. Uh, oh no, they BBC came and then they went. barely or, reported it. Yeah. RT has done quite a bit yeah. uh, because he used to do some inter- he did some interviews for them. Yeah. Um, he used to do a, a TV program for them right. um, before he went into the embassy. I guess um, because he was under a kind of semi house arrest staying mm. with some friend of his mm. and they, he used to do the interviews there I think and he did a series of them with various people mm. um, so they're mm. interested in his um, yeah. interested in following mm. what's going on with him I and guess. Um, is the is, uh, are they, is Julian working there I mean is he allowed to broadcast um, interviews from within the embassy or um, I don't know I'd imagine he's certainly in contact with people because I yeah. can't see how he wouldn't be he spent sure. his life on the yeah. computers you yeah. know? but I don't know I don't personally yeah. know yeah. Yes. and as far as there was a meeting with the South American com- countries, countries the other yeah. day yeah. Um, what happened with that as far as I know they well they it wasn't just South American countries it was mm. all the Americas basically yeah. which yeah. Ca- included Canada and the US right and I think they wanted a stronger kind of message mm. but I think the one that came out and this isn't a quote but uh, I gathered that the one that came out was basically that yes in, you know going into an embassy is invading another country's territory basically yes, yes. Uh, which is basically just to reiterate the basis of any embassy anywhere yeah. um, but they did agree that it would be a serious incident mm. to do that mm. and I think that was the extent that was as far as all of the countries were prepared to go and I think Canada even abstained from that but the rest of the countries Mm. did um, come out with that Mm. statement Mm -hmm. that they considered it a serious um, threat basically Mm. Mm. you know it's a disastrous notion yeah you know I mean every embassy in the world would be basically neutralized yes yes Yeah. yeah Yeah, not just in this country, but in other countries as well. Every embassy, not (laughs) just British ones. Yes, yes, sure. Yeah, so... Yeah, whoever's pulling the strings, they're pulling them in the wrong direction. (laughs) There's a knot in them somewhere. (laughs) So, in in your opinion, if you were were Julian, how would you get out of this situation, do you think? (laughs) I was going to say something. 
I was going to say I probably wouldn't have got myself into it. Uh, the first place. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great answer. Great answer. But I don't know. I think he's in the. He's he's not in charge at the moment. Anyway, definitely. You know, he's a he's a pawn in the game. Yeah. yeah. And a very nasty and serious game. Yeah. Yeah. With some extremely nasty people involved. Yeah. You know, I mean, when governments are prepared to break their own laws, people within acting within governments are prepared to break their own laws, then they have no standards, they have no limits mm. um, in terms of what they're prepared to do. Mm. So those people are extremely dangerous. Yeah, yeah. And do you yeah, think, think um, it's a very like more issue troops are coming out now? I hope so, as yeah. much as possible, because so much of, not just um, political life and, say, military mm. secrets, mm. but the kind of secret connections between corporations and governments etc mm. all those things need to be exposed to the air basically because yeah. it's because they haven't been that the world is in the state it's in at the moment with mm. countries like Spain and Greece and needless to say any other poor country for example is going to be once you drop that bar people at the bottom are falling into a horrendous situation yeah. Yeah. you know I just think all that needs to be exposed because so much of it was basically corrupt gambling and game playing. I mean, nobody has ever voted in a democracy for the world to be run as a gambling casino mm -hmm. that basically affects everybody's life, the quality of everybody's lives. Mm -hmm. And for no good reason other than that people want to shovel money into their own private bank accounts. And it's not even so much that, because you will always have greedy people, but we have governments who are supposed to protect us from those kind of people. And they have failed abysmally all over the world to stand up to these corporations and banks and demand that they behave in a ethical manner. Ethics probably has, is a dirty word these days, or, or at least it's probably considered a wishy-washy um, hippie word, but I'm afraid ethics is what keeps us all from living at the, as the pawns of gangsters, basically. Yeah, yeah. And if we don't ma maintain the standards we have, mm. then we can't preach at anybody else, that's mm. for sure. Mm. And let's face it, they love to preach. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, thank you very much for your thank time. You. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I wish you lots of uh, energy and strength. And success. For the time ahead. Wish success. And success yes. most Thank of you. all. <laughs> Thank you. So how long have you been down here then? Since the Sunday evening that Julian gave his speech from balcony uh, over there. Yeah. I've been down every night since. Yeah. As part of the vigil. Mm. And it's been an empowering two weeks that has changed my life completely, changed my awareness of the world. So I'm sounding really positive, but actually it's been the most challenging thing up against it with the British authorities. And, and what, what's changed for you in your ideas then? I don't live in a free country. I've always known that. And there's a certain veneer that is that built up over a very long period of time. And I felt the veneer held stronger than it actually does. And that was that change in perspective was the night the barriers were just uh, dragged away. And, and why did they bring barriers here then? The barriers were here in the first place for as part of uh, to provide for vigil space, which the authorities had been in originally in agreement with. And so you think they've taken the barriers away? because they want it to be a, um, for pedestrians and they want to clear away the protesters? Or? It's... Everything that they have done has been designed to make it so horrendously difficult that people would give up and the night vigil would be ended, in which case the police could do what they pleased after dark, mm. which is how they operate. Mm. Never in daylight hours are people about. So, so what happens at night then? How does it change as far as the police presence is concerned? It increases and basically they get worse, they get more aggressive and we're only remaining as the core group in one piece, mm. unarrested because of the live streaming. Mm. 
an example of modern technology with the internet whereby what happens goes straight online mm. and people all over the world and this country can see it. Mm. And, and where's the live streaming then? Is it the cameras on the side of the, the embassy? No, 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 or we're doing it. Oh, you're doing it yourself. Our cameras, yeah. cameras yes. Yeah. And, and how can people um, tune in to this live stream? It's uh, through Wikileaks, side of Wikileaks then. Right. So just go to Wikileaks and they can they can tune into the cameras. That's then. right, yeah. 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 So how, how long are you prepared to stay here for, do you think? For how long it takes. Hmm. But I'm going to be having a break tonight. Yes. <laughs> After <laughs> travelling to Brighton and all the rest of it today. Right. So it was Brighton Gay Pride. Yeah. And of course Bradley Banning is a young gay man. Yeah. And this is the first British Pride event where basically there has been a into a protest intervention pointing out what's been happening to people mm. Mm. and it was uh, responded to extremely well mm. Mm. Um, and have you had any contact with uh, Julian at all does he does he make contact with the protesters he has yes yeah. sometimes the window goes the fair open up and he's waving waving through the back curtains yeah. Plus, he has also sent at different points in time various items of food and bottles of water. Mm -hmm. um, and if you were Julian, how, how do you think you'd make your escape? I really don't know. If I was Julian at the moment, and I, he's also related to message that he's really chuffed at all the hard work we've done out here. Mm -hmm. And so that's all I can think. If I was Julian, that's what I would be thinking myself. Oh, wow, people I have never met yeah. very largely have been prepared to come out to prevent an injustice. Mm -hmm. And if you wanted to send a message to Julian now, um, what would it be? I think my message to Julian is, hi mate, we're never going to give up on you and hopefully someday soon I'll be on holiday in Ecuador, safe in the knowledge that you're at an address there somewhere. So thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much for your time and good luck. Okay. Hello, is there any chance of an interview with uh, Julian at all? None whatsoever as far as I'm aware, sir. No. How, how would I, can I get in touch with the, with the embassy well, at all? Second, yep. Thank you very much. Cheers. There's no one to speak to from yeah. the Ecuadorian. I'm certainly not going to knock on the door and ask them. No. What I would advise you to do yeah. is try and obtain some sort of contact telephone number from the internet for okay. them. Great. Try and organise a an arranged visit, as it were. Yeah. Okay. So it's kind of appointments only then. I would imagine. So. I've not been told anything different. No. I've not been told anything with regards to that. I'm yeah. just a bit of a common sense to approach really. Yeah. At the minute, we've got log a scene log right I'm not going to let people just wander up and knock on the door and stuff. No, no, okay? sure. Yeah. Okay, so the best thing is to telephone I would say or... contact the Ecuadorian Embassy yeah. and try to arrange some sort of appointment. Yeah. Okay, okay. so thank Failing you very much. that, contact the Metropolitan Police um, Press yeah. Association and ask them if they've got any further instruction with regards to that. Okay, thank you very okay. much. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I wonder if uh, Julian's actually in, Julian might be actually inside, inside one of these boxes. Keep calm. Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I had a brilliant, I had a brilliant idea. I also, 
<laughs> if, only, if only it was so simple to get out of the embassy in just, in just a box. Who knows, maybe tomorrow it's going to be on the news. We were here, we witnessed it.